Hello everybody, I'm Richard Oldner, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today it's all about big block Chevys. We're going to take a Gen 6 big block Chevy, we're going to compare carburation to fuel injection, we'll take a look at a cam swap, and we'll take a look at nitrous. This is actually the beginning segment of one of my very long live feeds, so for the guys who don't want to stay for the full hour, here is the short version. Hey guys, Richard Oldner here with pro tip number two. You're building a street strip LS combination. Get a small cam. That's right. Stay away from anything that says stage two, three, or four. Instead, stick with a stage one or even smaller. You see, the camshaft doesn't dictate the power output of a turbo combination. That's the job of the turbo. The camshaft dictates the response rate. Small cam, lots of response. Big turbo, lots of power. I've got turbo cams on sale right now at richardholdnerperformance.com. Yeah, we're live. We are here. I got some more dino results. We got graphs. We got photos. We got all, we got videos. We got all kinds of stuff. So we got some good stuff going on for tonight. So hopefully you guys are excited. And tonight it is all about big block Chevy. So I'm going to show you some big block Chevy stuff, some cool stuff. We've got carburation versus fuel injection, you know, because... <laughs> give people more things to argue about because you know there's no shortage of that going on right now and then um what happens also when we do a cam swap and then even before the cam swap what happens when we add nitrous because nitrous really is and we've always described it ah, it is the easy button <laughs> there's there's no other easier button that actually is a button and it works very very well so we're going to show you what happens when we do that basically you know kind of the thing that we always do it's a gen 6 big block chevy right from the wrecking yard but on this one what we normally do in fact i'll go ahead and we'll show you some photos here so you can take a look like i said gen 6 big block chevy we ran it with the long runner fuel injected manifolds and don't worry if you miss this i can run it through many many times and then we ran it with the fuel injected manifold and we ran it the way that we always do we run it with a you know the long tube headers and open exhaust kind of uh, usually a muffler section or something back behind it uh, a mazir electric water pump we ran it with an MSD distributor and we took because we took out the factory setup. And then we ran it with the Holly HP management system. <clears throat> and then with that way, we could dial in the injectors and all that stuff and get the air, fuel, and timing that we want and see how much power it makes. And then we swapped over. I'll go ahead and run this through again. Then we swapped over to a simple dual plane intake manifold. This is more normally the way that we run these. We've got a dual plane, like a YN or an RPM air gap. And then like something like a 650 or 750 carburetor. And like I said, the MSD. And on this particular one, we also added a simple NOS like sniper. Very simple nitrous plate. Adjustable from 75 to 100 to 125 horsepower. And then we added some nitrous to it because, you know, it's a junkyard motor. No, you, we don't care about that. <laughs> you know, nobody cares about that motor. And so that's exactly what we did. And you could see it made good power. Well, you can't see that yet, but you can see we ran through. So we'll run through this one more time so you guys can see all the photos. Big difference um, in terms of the way that the intake manifold looks on that kind of long runner deal there versus what happens when we do this on a... Um, you're a typical dual plane because that's normally the way that we run. I, in in most of the cases, the way that we used to get these motors is that we would get the motor from the wrecking yard. We take all the front accessory off and throw it away. We take the intake, the all the EFI stuff, and just throw it away. And now I'm kicking myself for ever doing that because now I kind of want that stuff back and I want to run. I want to run something on it. But you know that's what happens. So let's take a look. You guys can kind of see now uh, what's going on here as far as the layout for what the motor looks like and all of that. So let's take a look here at our power curves now. This is our factory curve with the long runner EFI intake manifold. It made 456 horsepower and 486 foot pounds of torque. Again, this is run with the long tube headers the way that we run it. And you can see where our, our peak powers are. This is all very low. All of this happened below 5,000 RPM. The peak is like at 43 or 4,400 RPM. Peak torque is down at 32 or 3,300. Here's what happened when we put the dual plane intake manifold on there. Made a little more power, picked up to 370 horsepower, but dropped torque down to 476 foot-pounds of torque. So you can see a little bit more power past like uh, 3,800 RPM, let's call it. But below that, lost out in torque production compared to the long runner factory EFI manifold. But we cured all of that by adding that plate set up on our on our carbureted intake manifold, put the simple nitrous setup under there, pick power up to over 500 horsepower. In this case, the peak number that we saw was 519 horsepower. 
and a whopping 646 foot-pounds of torque there at the spike, obviously lower than that for most of the curve, but did you know very, very well. One of the other things that we did is bef uh, after running the nitrous is we did a cam swap. So we put it on an extreme energy 276. I think I'm going to show you what the specs are here. Yeah, it is a 510 lift at 224, 230 on a 110. And that picked up power quite a bit. And we went from 370 to 428 and then 515 foot pounds of torque. And as you can see, with the cam and the carburetor, it really made more torque uh, than the carbureted setup did with the stock camshaft, even down low. In fact, it made more torque down low than the EFI setup did with a stock camshaft. So it did very well. And as I said, over 500 foot pounds of torque, it did, you know, it did really good in terms of torque production. We kind of expect this from a dual plane intake manifold in this case, but allowed the thing to continue to make power at least out, <laughs> out to, you know, all the, all the way out to 5,500 RPM and, and would keep revving if we wanted it to. One of the things I wanted to point out, obviously we had to put mm -hmm. a different valve spring setup on there. And even still, as of right now, I don't have the ideal spring combination, but I'm working on something that would be a, just a nice, easy, direct kind of bolt in deal for this stuff. Cause I think that there's a, I think there's a market for that. And it's something that I want to satisfy. Cause I think, I think this gen six big block Chevy with a cam and like a carburetor intake and everything is, uh, should be kind of the go-to for, for guys. And even if they're keeping the EFI intake manifold on there and they want to run some sort of smaller camshaft in there that's still, you know, you know, drive it has good drivability, but also offers a lot more power. Like I said, this thing made the same torque that it did with the EFI setup. So the camshaft is small enough on a motor that's 454 cubic inches. You could also go slightly smaller on the camshaft on this thing. You could go down to, you know, something in the 250 advertised, 260 advertised. So something that would be like a 212 or 218 kind of thing, kind of like a low buck truck that we have for the LS, something like that for the big buck. You could go to that and, and still pick up quite a bit of power over the stock stuff. As we saw, we got, what did we get? Almost 50, yeah, yeah, 50 horsepower, 50, a little bit more than that. So it did good. Um, <laughs> Todd, you can't see the you can't see the graph there. Um, the uh, big block stuff is good. Um, you know <laughs> what we get though is when we post this stuff. Oh yeah, it made four hundred and something horsepower. They're like, yeah, that. But that's what a Cam five three makes, and it does. But a Cam five three doesn't make five hundred and fifteen foot pounds, especially not down here. And it's not starting out at over 450 foot pounds, which is why these things are so popular for the application that they are made for, which obviously is towing because we want to see, you know, you need a, a whole bunch of low speed torque, but not that we're promoting one thing over the other, but this is what they do. I mean, if you go to the wrecking yard and get something and get a Gen 6, I've run, I'm sure I've run a dozen of these at least. And this is what they do. This is what they always do. You know, it might vary a little bit, depending on what kind of shape that they're in. But they're the Gen 6 stuff is nice, four bolt blocks, they're hydraulic factory hydraulic rollers. They got the they got at least decent cylinder heads on them. They're not peanut ports. And so and you could see that they make because they have small combustion chambers on them, 102, I think ours measured at the small combustion chambers. Um, and then if you want to have the long runner intake manifold on there, you can, which is pretty cool. If you want to say EFI, for a lot of guys, if I was putting this in a Camaro or Chevelle or a C10 truck or something like that, you know, just a carbureted deal makes it pretty easy. Just put the distributor in, you know, just like just like any other big block guy is kind of used to a carburetor and intake a distributor, you know, and, and then kind of away you go. And then what we did is, OK, if a guy wanted to do that and, you know, wanted to be able to go to the drag strip and you know run some kind of reasonable time in it. Something that makes over 500 horsepower with, you know, a, a, an easy shot of nitrous and then, you know, over 600 fit or 600 foot pounds of torque, that's going to get stuff motivated. You're going to have a, you're going to have a traction issue depending on how early you hit the nitrous. So that will work for a lot of simple kind of, you know, street deals that guys are doing. And, and because it makes so much low speed power, you know, you can, <laughs> if, if spinning the tires is your thing, you should have no trouble at all doing any of that. But we'll see. Um, this is this. I'll, I'll, in fact, I'll go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and run through the for guys that weren't here. You guys can kind of take a look at the combination that we ran on the big block with the EFI and the carbureted induction system. And then obviously we added the nitrous setup to it, <clears throat> simple plate system. 
and all of that worked out really good. <clears throat> Change, you know, we got different jet sizes <clears throat> that we can run. Although with the solenoids that were on this simple sniper kit, because it's a low dollar kind of plate to set up, there's a limit to how much, uh, you know, how much nitrous the even the solenoids will support. But, but I'm sure we probably could go a little bit more than we did. But they, you know, even at that junkyard motor, which is why we love them, junkyard motor. <laughs> Simple carbureted deal, nitrous set, and we are on our way. Lunchbox, what's going on, Tim? Tim's first in. 